Welcome to the session Earthquake Resistant Design Philosophy. This is uh, Mr. Chetan Ji Konapure, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. These are the learning outcomes for the students. So, student will be able to demonstrate the concept of earthquake resistant design and they can apply the conceptual design features in the structures. Now, why civil engineering structures are affected? This is the first question in the earthquake. What is the basic uh, problem in that the structures are severely affected by the earthquake? Now, most uh, structures are having their time period, which is very near, closer to the time period of earthquake vibration. That is the basic reason. So, when the time period of the structure as well as the earthquake are matching, so resonance effect will arise and that is why structures are severely affected. Now next thing is explained in this figure number 1. You can see this uh, flow chart in this figure, it is very small. Input, some media is there and output is there. Now ground motion is input that is the earthquake and the output is amplified structure response. Generally these are deformations. But in between this ground motion input and output of amplified structure response, basically this intermediate part is stru structure properties. Now, if proper structure properties are selected or designed, this may act as a filter which will reduce the output means structural response or if they are improper, structural properties are improper, inappropriately designed, then this will act as amplifier also and you will get very high response, high deformations. Now the design philosophy of earthquake and the basic facts uh, uh, which are uh, on which the philosophy is based, that is first thing is the earthquake proof construction is practically impossible. So we are using the earthquake resistant term, we are not using earthquake proof term, proof construction is practically impossible. Now, Second thing is that the structures to resist most severe shaking will be very expensive building which will, which will not be even economical also. And last is most severe earthquakes are not frequent also. Suppose we if we design the structures for the most severe earthquake probably in the entire period of uh, or life of that structure the earthquake may not uh, happen or your earthquake may not repeat also. Now what are the objectives behind this philosophy? Every philosophy is based on some objective or what the structure should do when the earthquake will happen or how the structure should perform. Here different earthquakes are categorized and the expected performance of the structure is also shown here. Now first is the minor and infrequent earthquakes. So minor earthquakes are frequent in nature. So there should not be any damage, should not be any damage for the structure. For moderate earthquakes, no structural damage, some non-structural damage. No structural damage means structural elements should not have any damage. Non-structural damage means the plaster cracking, ceiling plaster falling, parapet damage. These are expected. But the structural elements should remain intact without damage. Last is severe and infrequent earthquake. Structural damage is expected. So, so some damage to the structural elements is also expected for severe and infrequent earthquake but no collapse. Based on this performance of the structure the philosophy is made. Now the design philosophy actually it is based on dual design philosophy. The earthquake resistant design we, which are they? There are two design philosophies or sorry two du dual objectives. First is safety level design, second serviceability level design. How the safety of the structure is ensured? Safety of the structure is not compromised at for any type of earthquake, there, though, though there may be extreme earthquake events, but our structure must remain safe in that also. Second is serviceability design, means what? If frequent earthquakes are there, if moderate earthquakes are also there, in those moderate or frequent earthquakes also, our utility service lines of the structure shall not be disrupted, shall not be damaged. So one is safety level, second is serviceability level. In one case extreme earthquake consideration is there in safety level design. In second case in serviceability level design, moderate and frequent earthquakes are considered. So these two are the uh, dual 
design philosophies for architect resistant design now how it can be ensured design codes individual to satisfy both performance requirement means safety level design requirement serviceability level uh, requirement and this is possible through a combination of proper analysis design and detailing specifications which already the covered code has covered now next is design earthquake now design earthquake events are required for both the performance criteria design earthquake means suppose in a particular zone particular area if any extreme earthquake happened in history or from the historical uh, record any earthquake is there which is very extreme earthquake can we design the structures for of that area for that extreme earthquake so in that case the structure will be practically we cannot construct it may be very heavy or economical also so what should be the earthquake level which we should consider for our designs so there are two categories one is extreme earthquake event second is moderate earthquake event which we should consider for the analysis and design which is considered in the course also extreme earthquake event means it is termed in our code as maximum considered earthquake in that particular zone the abbreviation is mce it has very low probability of occurrence and uh, it must not result in excessive casualties and damage also the probability of this earthquake in the 50 years is 2% and from the probabilistic approach uh, the data is given that it may return once in 2005 years on an average now what is the moderate earthquake event this is termed as design basis earthquake in our code and it has moderate probability of occurrence it must result in a moderate and repairable damage most important thing is the damage which is repairable means for even for structure or non structural uh, element the damage happens it can be repaired it must result in very few casualties and the probability of occurrence is of 10% so after the probabilistic approach whatever return period is calculated that is once in 475 years on an average now so extreme earthquake is there moderate earthquake is there for which we should design we should consider that earthquake which uh, we should have some proper level and that is called as design earthquake now this design earthquake event have been decided based on par earthquake data this is the first uh, uh, preliminary work to decide any or design earthquake for a particular area earthquake severity has been classified on the basis of maximum or even it is termed as a peak ground acceleration pga also it is it is also called as pga now our country has divided into four seismic zones and these seismic zones are actually based on their peak ground accelerations or even the earthquake hazards now in the, those zones zone 2 has very lowest hazard and zone 5 has very highest hazard now let us first see for the example mumbai city solapur city falls in seismic zone 3 delhi falls in zone 4 and bhuj uh, earthquake happened in bhuj so that's why this is also the important uh, earthquake which already always considered in the earthquake analysis and design it is in zone 5 all these uh, things are shown in seismic zoning map of is 1893 2016 let's see this seismic zoning map so this is a zoning map of 1893 you can see here so entire country is divided into four seismic zone zone 2 3 4 5 so this kashmir himalayan belt and this area belongs to zone 4 and 5 so this tekken plateau actually it was considered earlier in earlier era it was considered as a seismically inactive now this zone this area belongs to zone 2 and zone 3 so solapur is in zone 3 now peak ground acceleration of maximum considered earthquake in each seismic zone have been decided from seismic tectonic, tectonic studies or past experience and basically the maximum considered earthquake peak ground acceleration is divided by 2 and that pga is considered for design basis earthquake the frequency content of ground motion is assumed the same for both the earthquakes so for mc and db frequency content will be the same now structures are explicitly designed for design basis earthquake 
and the safety under maximum consider earthquake is ensured through suitable over strength of the sections and ductility provision so the why ductility is required why the structure must deform more the basic reason behind that we are designing our structure for db design basis earthquake and we are ensuring the safety of the structure under maximum consider earthquake now there is one question for you all of you just pause the video and answer this question what is the relationship between the peak ground acceleration of design basis earthquake and maximum consider earthquake just answer it the answer is the peak ground acceleration of divine basis earthquake is assumed half the peak ground acceleration of maximum considered earthquake so you note it now let us see what are the conceptual design features now we are in the design features section the second outcome now in good, good conceptual design aspect first is your the plan must be very simple as well as elevation must be simple and regular you should go for the modular planning symmetry must be assured in plan as well as in elevation why it is so the basic reason whenever we go for these feature, uh, features we will uh, get directly the moderate stiffnesses and strength and the very uniform stiffness and strength that will uh, uh, ensure the integral action of the building so there should not be any uh, significant stiffness and strength non uniformity along the height of the building also now structural system should have, uh, should strike a balance between functional and structural requirement okay we need some cantilevers okay what should be the cantilever dimension that is important functionally if we need cantilever structural requirement cantilever must be very uh, small so this should be matched there should be the balance in functional requirement and cantilever sorry structural requirement these are the references for this uh, session thank you